The Burke Bark House by Louise Erdrich. Essential question. How can tradition influence a person's thoughts and feelings? Omakayas is returning home from an errand. She carries scissors for her mother and a lump of sweet maple candy for herself. Both the scissors and the candy are rare and valued items in her Ojibwe village in 1847. She is not eager to return home to the chore of turning a moose hide and to her older sister Angeline, who made fun of her earlier in the day. Her feelings are hurt and she wants nothing but to be respected by Angeline. Before she went back on the trail, Amakaias rinsed off the old candy lump in the lake. It came out beautifully creamy, golden, translucent and grainy dark and sweet. She started walking, her treasure now wrapped in a leaf. As she walked, Amakaya thought, There was no way to share such a tough nut of sweetness. How would she divide it? Macias decided she did not want to cause trouble at home. Furthermore, it suddenly made sense to her that at least one person in the family should get the full effect of the maple sugar. She would pop the whole thing into her mouth, all at once. This would save problems. Ah, the lump was delicious, tasting of spring sweetness and the inside of trees. Besides, Omakaias reasoned as she walked contentedly along. The taste of the sugar would save her from eating every one of the berries she was sure she would find on the path. Omakaya's feet moved slower and even slower yet. For one thing, the moose hide waited. For another, she was still angry with her older sister and didn't want to see Angeline. She could still feel that sister foot pressing hateful on her back. If only there were some way to impress Angeline, cause her envy. Make her say, can I have some of those berries, please, please, please? You can be sure, Omakaias thought, her face taking on a faraway, haughty expression. She would be slow in answering. Yet the worst of it was this. Her sister was usually on her side, helping her plan tricks on the other children in the village, or gathering new ferns, or snaring rabbits, visiting the grave house looking for sugar or food left for the spirits, tossing off her clothes to swim with her, and to have her older sister laugh at her, hurt Makaya so much inside that she both wanted Angeline to smile in surprise, to be proud, to envy her, and to feel hot and be sorry forever. So Macias took the slow way back looking for all they mean little red heart berries in the sunny margins of the woods near the ground. She carefully removed the hard lump of sweetness from her mouth, stuck it back in its sleeve just inside the pocket of her dress. Just as the taste of maple sugar faded along her tongue, she bent over, pushed back delicate leaves, and found masses of plump red little berries. Ah, uh, one, two, three. She'd eaten a huge handful. Another. She grinned, thinking that she'd allow her sister to return with her to plunder them but only if Angeline changed her ways. All of a sudden, a hustle and then a thumb in a bush ahead made Omakaias freeze. A long moment passed as she stared through the dark leaves. Suddenly, crash! Two bear cubs burst from the bush and rushed 
pale male tumbling head over heels straight for her. They came on in such a hurry that they didn't see Omakaias until they were nearly in her lap. And then, with a comical look of shock, they tried to stop themselves. One flew flat on its face, bumping its nose and squealing. The other twisted in mid-air and landed in a heap on the ground, shaking its head in confusion at Macias. The bear boys looked at her. Slowly, she put out her open hand filled with the hard berries. Curious, the cubs jumped forward, lost their nerve. They scampered backward and then crept forward shyly again. The smaller cub seemed slightly bolder and sniffed at Omakaya's hand. The bear cub took one berry, then jumped away in seeing fright at its own bold act. But the taste of the berry seemed to banish fear. The two now tumbling at her, growling mock furiously, their long pink tongues touched up every berry from her hands, eagerly flicking them from her fingers as fast as she could pick. They seemed to like the game. It could have gone on for hours, that is, until she stood up right. Then they tumbled backward in alarm. Their shabby buttons rolled them over like playing balls, and she laughed out loud. She realized they had thought Omakaias was their own size. They were astonished the same way. Omakaias had been the first time she saw the traitor Kadot unfold a thin glass, something he called a telescope, a long shine tube that grew in his hands. She bent down again. And then, little brothers, she said to them kindly, and they came forward. She looked around, no mother bear. Omakais was well aware that she shouldn't stay so close to these cubs, but after all, they seemed deserted. She looked around again. They were orphans. Perhaps the mother bear's skin was now draped across old Talos bed, although she hadn't heard about a recent kill. But still, no mother bear in sight. And this little one so hungry, wouldn't her big sister be thrilled when Omakaya's returned with these two new brothers? Eagerly, Omakaya's began to plan out her triumph walk back to the house. She would enter the little clearing with the cubs, one at her heels and one before her. Everyone would make way, impressed. She would lead the bear cubs around the fire four times before she presented one of them to Angeline, who would look at her with new respect. There was no warning. One moment, Omakaias was wiggling a leaf stick, making it move on the ground so the cubs would jump on it, biting fiercely. Then next moment, she found herself flipped over on her back and pinned underneath a huge, powerful, heavy thing that sent down a horrible stink. It was the sauber, the mother, breathing on her, a stale breath of decayed old deer hides and skunk cabbage and dead mushrooms. Oh, ah, uh, the surprising thing was Makayas realized later that although she had no memory of doing so, she had the scissors out of their case and open, the sharp ends point at the bear's heart. But she didn't use them as a knife. She knew for a certain that she should not move. If the bear began to bite and claw, she would have to plunge the tip of the scissor 
straight in between the bear's strong ribs, use all of her strength, sink the blade all the way into the rounded hilt, and then jump clear. If she could while the bear went through its death agony. If she couldn't get clear, Omakaias knew she would have to roll up in a ball and enter the bear's fury. She would probably be clawed from head to foot, bitten to peace, scattered all over the ground. Until the mother bear made the first move, Omakaias knew she should stay still, or as still as possible, giving the terrified jump off her heart. Analyze the text. Visual elements. What do you notice about these stories illustrations? How do the illustration add to the beauty of the text? For long moments, the bear tests her with every sense, staring down with her weak eyes, listening, and most of all, smelling her. The bear smelled the morning smooth meat stew Omakaias had eaten, the white one in season and the dust bit of maple sugar from old talon stuck to the inside of her pocket. How she hoped the bear did not smell the bear killing dogs or the bear claw that swung on a silver hoop from old talon's ear lub. Perhaps the bear smelled the kind touch of grandma and mama's bone and sprouts would comb, her baby brother's scuddling body, the skins and mats she had slept in, and little Pinch, who had whined and sobbed the night before. The bear smelled on the Makaya's skin the smell of its own cousin's bear grease used to ward off mosquitoes. Fish from the night before last night, the berries she was eating, the bear smelled all. Omakaias couldn't help but smell her back. Bears eat anything and this one had just eaten something ancient and foul. Hi, Anne. Omakaias took shallow breath. Perhaps it was to take her mind off the scent of dead things on the bear's breath that she accidentally closed the scissors, showing off a tiny clip of bear fur, and then to cover her horror at this mistake, started to talk. Analyze the text. Author's word choice. Authors use sensory details that make readers feel what is happening in the story. Which details of the bear encounter make you feel Makaya's fear? No comments, she said to the bear, calling her grandmother. I didn't mean any harm, I was only playing with your children. Gawini Jeda, please forgive me. The bear coughed at Makaya's, but in a warming manner, not savage to hurt. Then the bear leaned back, nose working, as though she could sense the meaning of the human words, encouraged Omakaya's continent. I feed them some berries. I wanted to bring them home, to adopt them, have them live with me at my house as my little brothers. But now that you are here, grandmother, I will live quietly. These scissors in my hands are not for killing, just for sewing. They are nothing compared to your teeth and claws. And indeed, the Makaya's voice trembled slightly as the bear made a gurgling sound deep in her throat and bared her long, curved, yellowish teeth so good at ripping and tearing. But having totally up all of the smells and shifted them for information, the bear seemed to have decided that Omakaias was no threat. She sat back on her haunches like a huge dog, swinging her head around. She gave a short, quick slap at one of the cubs that sent it healing away from the Omakaias. 
It was as though she were telling them they had done wrong to approach this human animal and should now stay away from her. Makaya's heart skills painfully. Even though it was clear her life was to be spared, she felt the loss of her new brothers. Analyze the text. Theme. How does Omakaya's respond during the mother bear encounter? How do her reactions related to the theme of this story? I wouldn't ever hurt them, she said again. The little cubs piled against their mother, clung to her. For a long moment, the great bird sat calmly with them, deciding where to go. Then, in no hurry, they rose in one piece of dark fur. One bear boy broke away again, tried to get near Omakaya's. The other looked longly at her, but the big bear mother abruptly nosed them down the trail.